welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why and how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for lending me those wonderful ears. Today, I want to talk about three types of salespeople, and I need you to understand who you are as a salesperson and where you fit. Now, there's in the market today, we, we know there's so many things happening in the market today, right? Competition's getting tight. Uh, price increases are everywhere. Everybody's trying to reduce costs. So there's a lot of pressure for salespeople to drop prices or be different or differentiate themselves. Now, here's the thing. It's hard to differentiate yourself in a market where almost every product or service almost looks alike. So differentiation is a very tough thing to accomplish. The other thing people are trying to do is maybe reduce costs so they can win on price. But you know what? You can only cut your prices down to a certain level before that's it. You start going into the what I call the pricing death spiral and you're losing money. So if we can't differentiate, we can't cut pricing, what do we do? Mm, that's why you're here. Listen up, because I think I have something for you. Now, there's three levels of salespeople, and obviously, I want you to be at level three. So let's go through the levels, because if you understand where you're at today, and I can push you to get to level three, maybe you're there, maybe you're not, but if I can push you to get to level three, then pricing and competitive differentiation just melt away when you know how to do level three sales activities. So sales level number one, this is where you go in and you solve a customer or client's problems. In other words, client says, this is the problem I have. You react and you say, bam, here is how you solve it. Here's how our product or service can do that. That is a reactive sale level number one. Nothing wrong with that. You're being responsive. You're being reactive. Nothing wrong with that. But if we want to up our game, which we do, then you want to go to level number two. Now, level number two is not about the client telling you they have the problem. It's about you identifying and highlighting a problem that the customer has, making them aware, and then being able to solve that problem. Now, this is a more proactive approach where you're not waiting for the customer to tell you, hey, I got a problem, like level one. At level two, you see what they can't see or are ignoring. So you make them aware, you identify the problem, and you offer a solution. If you're doing that, you're in great company because I think that's where the majority of salespeople are, the best of the best. We're talking about the top 10% are at this level. Now, if you want to move into that 1% range where the best of the best are that, then you want to go to level three, And instead of solving a problem, level one, instead of identifying a problem, level two, what you want to do is anticipate a problem that the customer is going to have, and what you're going to do is highlight to the customer why they need to make the move with your product or service. In other words, you're anticipating a problem for them. Now you're in true consultative mode. And I'm going to call it consultative mode 2.0 because in today's market, what people want is for you to identify, as we talked about, problems that they have at level two. But more importantly, what if you can anticipate a problem in the future that the customer can't see? In other words, many companies today are so focused on short-term results, they're not looking at the long-term. When you come in, you have an objective perspective and you zoom out and you can see where things might be going. Now, this is gonna require you to understand their product, what they're offering, their customer base, more importantly, the market, what's happening in the market and your product and service and putting all that together will allow you to say, look, Mr. Customer, here's what I see is gonna happen over the next year or two. Here's what I think you should be doing and here's how we can help. And if you move into this mode of selling, the consultative mode of selling, you are now in the 1% of the best of the best in the field. So again, ask yourself, where are you at? Are you level one, just solving a problem? Are you level two, identifying a problem that they're currently having? Or are you, are you level three, where you're basically predicting, anticipating for them what problems they're going to have in the future and how you're going to help solve them? If you can do that, believe it or not, 
customers will begin to not look at price anymore or differentiation. They begin to see you as that person that is going to guide them. They want to hold your hand and they want you to be part of their virtual team, so to speak. Be a partner with them. Instead of being a supplier, you now become a business partner. And that's what companies are looking for today in this hyper competitive market. So again, keep the three levels in mind and make sure you're striving for level number three. And that is it for the Sales Influence Podcast. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your feedback. Leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Pandora, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Love to hear your thoughts. And after you do that, you know the deal. Check out the Sales Velocity Academy. Ooh, if you haven't checked it out lately, we've added some new courses. Uh, also added some great management courses. So again, whether you're in sales or management, check out the salesvelocityacademy.com. And that is it. This is Victor Antonio signing off, always reminding you, selenate hard when you know how. Take care. Hi. I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me, and it's always about them.